that she's already here. Thank you mm. that today you've chosen her to speak to us, that you will speak to us through her, that mm. whatever about this amazing topic, oh God, that you will stir up her memory and and make her be lively and be able to 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 reach our hearts. You know what each of us needs here mm. for this our life, much as it's the same mm. topic that that we might take away. And we know mm. that we shall be set up to be great men of God in the mm. in the space because of this. And we thank you for all the that so have prayed on this platform. And yes. we give our hearts are grateful in Jesus' mm. name. I believe that amen. 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 Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you can all hear me. My name is Faith yes, Burkett. Good morning. Yeah, the Lord's mercies are renewed every morning. So we come here believing there's something special for us. And I want to think one of the reasons we meet here, we've been meeting twice a week, is because the scripture tells us we should not be ignorant of the devil's schemes or he'll have an advantage over us. So much as we should know we should know all the heavenly principles and all the good things. We also have to know what the devil is up to. So today's topic is really an interesting one. Spying for battle. So clearly we're not spying on God's side. We're spying on what the enemy is up to. And I think we first see that in the scripture as well. When the Lord, tell, the Lord himself tells Moses to send been to explore the promised land, who we know as the 12 spies. So I want to introduce our speaker today, who is going to help us understand this practically. Uh, her name is Yudis, Eunice Adubango, PhD. She is married to Bran Adubango. She is a mother of three boys with a PhD in civil engineering project management. She has a master's in engineering management and a bachelor's in civil engineering. She lectured in Makere for 12 years, from 2006 to 2018. And currently she is lecturing at Indeje University, the School of Graduate Engineering Studies. She is the owner and managing partner of Talitha Store, Unis Kitchen Limited, and Unis Culinary School. She is an author of four books, including a yearly women's devotional written each year for the last seven years. So I'd like to welcome my speaker. We're very excited to hear from you. Please, um, Eunice, you may take over from here. Thank you very much, Faith. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. You're all welcome for this meeting today. I'm very happy to be here. I'm very happy to be be teaching us. I'm very happy to be sharing the things that God has taught me, the things that I have learned from other people in this, uh, this or about this topic of spiritual warfare. Um, one of the reasons why this particular topic is very important to me is around about four years ago, maybe five years ago, I decided that if the physical things in the world can help me to understand the spiritual things, then it was important for me to, to seek out people who do the physical things that are parallel to the spiritual things so that I understand them. So the first thing that I did was to seek out a friend that is a lawyer, and I sat with her to help me understand the law. I wanted to understand how to put petition, how do they write a petition, how do you present a case, uh, because I realized that sometimes probably I was presenting my, ca my cases before the courts of heaven, and I was not getting the results because I was not following the rules of procedure. So I sought out a lawyer and she helped me to understand so much about the law, so much about how to present petitions, so much about how to write them, so much about defense. And so when I go into warfare, I sort of now know how to glide. I know when it is time to petition, when it is time to plead a case, when it is time to make a declaration, when it is time to plead my case, when it is time to bring defense, it has helped me so much. 
So in that same way, I also approached a friend that is in the army. He's a, a general in the army. And I told him to teach me something about war, warfare, how they plan wars, how they go about war, what do they do, etc, etc. And so one of the things that he taught me was spying. Now, today's topic is one of those which if an army general in this country gets to know that we are discussing this, they would log on. Because nations are sustained by espionage, by spying, by spy networks, you know. And many times nations fall because the spy network is not strong or because information has, has, has been gotten out of the spy network. So this is a very sensitive topic. I believe that this is probably one of those things that should be taught to every believer when they sign up to be part of the army of Christ. Like you have heard, I'm Eunice. I own Eunice Kitchen and Eunice uh, Culinary School and Talitha Store. I want to particularly this morning invite you to um, visit us at Uni's Kitchen. We have three locations, Mokono near the High Court, just overlooking the district headquarters, Kasangati near the court, uh, just after Total Bulamu, and Weogere just at the point when you start the Bukasa Road. So let's dive right into it. Um, so it's quite... Uh, it's quite a, a big topic, but I have prayed and I have believed God that I will be able to that I will be able to manage it. Um, I want to be able to share my slides, so just allow me to open them and um, be able to share. Okay, so let me share my screen so that we can all be able to see. I hope we can see the screen. Um, everyone can see my screen? No. Not, Not yet. yet. Not yet. No. Why can't I see? Why can't you see the screen? Okay. Are you able to see something there? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Thank God. Okay, so um, we are discussing espionage. Like I said, it's one of the very, very sensitive topic when it comes to the army. And what is spying? Spying is the art of getting access to intelligence information so that one, you know the condition of your enemy. Two, you know the conditions of your own territory because you want to know what your enemy is up to, but you also want to know if you are okay. Because sometimes, like the Bible says, while the son of man slept, the enemy went sowing tears among the wheat. That is why the, the Bible tells us that we should not be unaware of the enemy's devices. So we want to know the condition of the enemy, but we want to also know the condition of our own territory. Actually, the Bible tells us now that those of us who are in business, those of us who are, who are parents, the Bible tells us to be to understand the condition of our flocks. That's part of spying. So we want to know the condition of the enemy. You want to know the conditions of your own territory so that you can secure it or so that you can conquer the territory. And then the other thing is so that you can get forward knowledge of war information. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 24, 6 that if you have guidance, you'll be able to win a war. So the reason why we spy, there are so many other reasons, but I will just focus on those three. Um, now, you cannot be a good spy because if you are going to do a good job, you've got to be uh, good at it. Now, you cannot be a good spy unless, number one, you have foresight or sound judgment or good judgment. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 2, 11, that good judgment will protect you. It actually says we should strive for wisdom. We should strive for knowledge because wisdom or knowledge or insight or good judgment will protect you. So if you spy who cannot judge well, you see, when you're driving and you are very keen and you see something crossing the roadway ahead, 
you will be able, if you have good judgment, to start to slow down from a distance. Now, sometimes some of us run straight into the enemy territory because yes, we have the information, but we do not have good judgment. Now, if you are going to be a good spy, you have to develop your ability to judge situations. And then you have to have discernment. The Bible tells us in Romans 12 to when it tells us to renew our mind with the word, it tells us to have a renewal of the mind. The last part of that scripture says, by testing, you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable. So if, for example, you're on this call and the last time you opened the Bible is the last time you were in church. The last time you opened was the last time that you, you, you had a teaching like this. The last time you opened the Bible was yesterday. You are losing out on your ability to move closer towards having discernment. You see, the Bible says that discernment will come to those who by constant use of the word have learned. That is why in certain situations you are wondering, I don't understand this. How do you do this? And then there will be a believer who can discern, who can tell because of constant use of the word. So if you don't have a constant usage of the word, if you do not renew your mind with the word of God, if you do not increasingly understand the scriptures, you will not be a good spy. And then keen perception. The Bible says in Proverbs 4, 20 to 22, my son, pay attention to my word. Keep them in the midst of your heart for they are life to those who find them and help to all their flesh. It tells us that we should have the word on the forehead of our, you know, on our forehead, the frontlets of our head. It tells us that we should bind them on our hands. It tells us that we should put them on our ankles. Basically, it tells us to wear the word. One of the first things that I was told when I got married by, by my husband was, that scripture actually talks about all the senses of all, all our bodily senses as far as the word is concerned. And so he told me that I need to learn to always look in the word and then have a time when I listen to the word and then have a time when I just feel the word. And then I have to have a time when I meditate on the word because meditation is what helps me to keep it in my heart. Now, if you lack that, if you do not go through those processes that I have said, you will not be a good spy. The other thing is you need credible sources of information. The Bible tells us in 1 John 4, 1, that we should test the spirits, okay? Sometimes you are given information. Maybe it is even a prophecy. It is a prophetic. Maybe it is even a scripture. Maybe it is even a part of a sermon. But sometimes maybe the vessel that has presented the word has not presented it right. Sometimes maybe they have missed out something. Maybe they have misquoted. Maybe they have misjudged. Maybe they did not discern right. Now, when you do not test the spirit, you will not be a good spy. One of the reasons why I like to sit next to my husband during the service is every time the pastor is teaching, you will see him opening the verses. He will open the scriptures. He usually checks. Like the pastor can be reading something in John and you see him opening Deuteronomy. You see him opening Joshua and he will open, he will read it. He will either nod his head and, you know, look straight ahead. So I like to just keep looking, looking there because it also sort of helps me during the sermon. Credible sources of information. The other thing is knowledge of the law. The Bible says in Joshua 1.8 that we should not let the book of the law depart from our heart. We should meditate on it day and night. My army general friend whom I told you about actually helped me to understand something I hadn't understood about many army generals. If you go and you do a lot of research, you're going to find that probably 85% of people in the army, apart from the fact that there is a whole course called the law where they must understand the law of the land and the international law, many of them go ahead and they do degrees in law. And he told me it is because when you get spy information, you have to craft it in such a way that you fight your enemy, but you fight it using the law and yet you stay right by the law. Now, if you do not know the Bible, you are going to go and you're going to attack and you're going to be like the sons of Sheva, whom the enemy said, Paul, I know, eh? Peter, I know, but, but who are you guys? Like, what are you talking about? Because they did not, they were not working under the tenets of the law. So if you're going to be a good spy, you're actually going to be a lawyer for, 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 you know, for lack of a better way. You're going to understand the laws of heaven. You're going to interpret the laws of heaven so that any little information that falls on your desk, you're able to interpret it by the law. 
The other thing is a discreetness. Now, for me personally, this is something that I, I really toyed with for a long time. I suffered with it for a long time. And in studying how the enemy attacks me, because the Bible says in um, Isaiah 54, that 17, that no weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper. So usually what the enemy does is he fashions certain weapons specifically against specific people. Now, I noticed that most of the weapons that the enemy used to fashion against me, was something to do with my lack of, of being discreet. So it was very easy for the enemy to attack me because I, I didn't understand the essence of discreetness. So I could give away every sort of information about myself in as much depth as I could to the, the strangest stranger, even to the person that I think is close to me. And so the enemy knew how to set up many people in my hood, you know, and I would do that and my defenses would be done. The Bible says that the wisdom of a discreet man is to understand his way. Why do we go to war and what is our position? Usually governments go to war for three major reasons. There are many reasons, but three major reasons. Number one, to secure more territories. Now for us as believers, we are going to war because we are here to establish the kingdom of God. We are not going to war to get a house. We are not going war to, to war to buy a car. We are not going to war to get twins. We are not going to war to get quadruplets. And you see that exactly is where the issue is. So many times, because you are going against the enemy just so that you get a child and get out of the presence of God, you may not be able to win the war or that child comes and then another snare comes. It is because you've not understood the highest reason why we go to war. The Bible tells us that we are here to establish the kingdom of God. That is why in the Lord's Prayer, Jesus told us, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So I want to get this child so that I can raise this child for the kingdom, so that this child can go against the forces of darkness so that we can win. I don't want to get a child so that I can be counted as a mother. I usually tell people who tell me, oh, Eunice, you should try more times. You, you need a girl. And usually the first question I ask them is, has God told you that heaven needs a girl from Eunice? Because Heaven is going to give to me the children that it needs me to raise in order for us to bring the kingdom of God to, you know, down. Of course, when I was younger, when I did not have discernment, when I did not understand the scriptures, I also had such a few of things. But then as I started to search the scriptures, I started to understand. And so I concentrate on the three boys that God has given me and I raise them for the kingdom. After all, when I have three boys, I'm going to have three daughters. So I have three girls and I have three boys. The other reason why we go to war is to occupy our land. The Bible says, ask of me and I'll give you the nations as your inheritance. We have been given the nations as our inheritance. The ends of the earth as our possession. The reason why the spies that faith talked about went into, um, into the promised land is because it had already been given to them. Okay, so if God gives us, and this is where people who don't understand warfare say, must we do warfare? Jesus overcame. We are just sailing to heaven. Jesus has overcome and he has given us. If he wanted us to sail to heaven, he would not have given us keys. He said, I give you the keys. Okay, he said, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth shall be lost in heaven. Why did he do that if he did not think we needed it? Then he goes ahead and he says, put on the full armor of God. And he gives us our whole war clothing. Why does he do that if he thinks, oh, I mean, he would have given us a wedding gown. Um, I don't see in scripture where they give us wedding, where they give us wedding shoes, where, you know, he would have given us a wedding gown and given us a wedding cake and said, just be on that until I come. He gave us his body and his body is also warfare because when we eat it, it makes our broken bodies whole. Basically, he, Jesus who has given us the keys and hands and some believe, and that is why you're, we become poor spies because we do not know how to discern the scriptures. We are here to dominate. When you look at Genesis 127, we have been called to subdue the earth. So we, we go at war because we have to subdue, we have to dominate, we have to have the nations as our inheritance. We have to allow the kingdom of God to come. The other reason we go to war is to strengthen our defenses. That is why I told you that you want to know the condition of your enemy, 
but you also want to know your own condition so that you know where there are thorns and thistles, so that you know where there, where there, you know, that the, 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 the where the wall is broken. If you look at the book of Nehemiah, he talks to us about broken walls and that helps you to understand this portion that I'm talking about of strengthening our defenses. Now, what is our position? I really wanted to start here so that each one of us starts this entire teaching, not just encouraged, but with an understanding that we are not left behind. The Bible says in Romans 8, 28, 39, it asks so many questions. It's one of my favorite. I mean, the whole Bible is my favorite, but I have certain scriptures that are favorites. You know, in Romans 8, 28, I like the way Paul wrote. He keeps asking questions. He keeps saying, if God be for us, who can be against us? He says, nothing shall separate us from the love of God that we have in Christ. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. We may be perplexed, but we are not in despair. We may be struck down, but we are not destroyed. We may be left aside, but we are not abandoned. And he keeps raising many questions, many questions. And you know what, children of God? As spies, our DNA is the DNA of a conqueror. So we are not like national armies that go into a spy network like the underdogs. We get onto the spy network like conquerors. First John 4, 4 says, he that is in me is greater than the devil that is in the world. I love this. Apart from being a conqueror, I have someone that is on the inside of me. If he is greater, it means that if the devil can hear information about me, the Lord can hear in me, can hear more information than the devil. You know, people who say the devil has put you on a radar, he's hearing everything you're saying, be careful, there are, there are rats in your house, there is flies, and those things are true, they can happen. But the one that is in me is able to locate those things before those things get me, because he that is in me is greater than the devil that is in the world. Isaiah 45 verse 2 says, I will go before you. I will break down the gates of bronze and iron. I will show you treasures hidden in dark secret places. Now, listen to this. God is for you. No one is against you. God has made you more than a conqueror. Then he comes and says, as if that's not enough, he comes on the inside of you to help you. The Bible says that there is no nation that is like unto, our, uh, unto us who have the God of angel armies to help us, the mighty terrible one, the holy one of Israel. Now, as if that's not enough, he says, you know what? Eunice is a conqueror. I am for her, no one can be against her. I'm on the inside of her, but you know something? Eunice is in this world. Sometimes she gets perplexed by the things of this world. Let me go ahead of her. So she goes, he goes ahead of me. Deuteronomy 31, 8, he says, no, 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 no. I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. What does it mean? That when I'm on the field spying, Apart from the fact that I'm more than a conqueror, that the greater one is on the inside of me, that he has already gone ahead of me, he will not leave me. That scripture in the, in the New Testament actually comes out as if God swore. He said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you, no, never. It's like God said, I cannot leave you. I cannot, you know, like he's saying, I, there is no way under no circumstance. Even if your friends have left you, I can't leave you. Even if your marriage is over, I can't leave you. Even if your child is, I can not leave you. That is the promise that he has given us. And so, as Peter 2, 9 says, I'm a chosen person. Chosen, why? The Bible says that I did not choose him, but he chose me. He chose me to bear much fruit. I go on that spy field like the chosen one. I'm royal. I'm royalty. I go there like a king. I go there like a queen. I am a priesthood. No wonder I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. I carry within my mortal body the entire ark of the covenant. I am royalty and I am a priest and I'm a holy nation. Like when you look at Eunice, if you have the opportunity to meet me today, I don't want you to think you are meeting a person. You're meeting a whole nation like NC number, like you're meeting a whole nation and you're meeting a holy nation. So when you meet Eunice, you're meeting a ministry of defense, you're meeting a ministry of health, you are meeting a ministry of integrity, you are meeting, I am a holy and I am a nation. And then I'm God's special possession. You know that special thing like that little gold thing that you have that you want to keep so far away, 
I am God's special possession. And I have been brought out of darkness into his wonderful light. So I don't go to war like someone who is on the other side. I am not from the world of darkness. I'm from the world of light. I want us to understand every day that A, until you understand your position, it's going to be hard for you to spy. I want us to learn some lessons from the art of war. One of the things that my military general told me is to read that little book called The Art of War by Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu is a military general that fought and never lost even a single battle in 40 years. When I read The Art of War by Sun Tzu, I went ahead and I read a book called The Art of War for Spiritual Warfare by Cindy Trim. Now, every military general all over the world. You know how we want to memorize the Bible and memorize the verse and the, the page and the book and the ink in which it was written? Every military general in the world literally memorizes the art of war. Like they have to just be woken up and they can tell which paragraph it is written in the art of war. They take seasons and times to understand the art of war. So for me, what I do, Apart from continually reading the Art of War by Sun Tzu, every year I read the Art of War for Spiritual Warfare probably more than four times because I want to understand the art of this. Now, these are some of the famous quotes from Sun Tzu. And I am going to draw some parallels. Sun Tzu says that knowledge in any war gives us superiority knowledge in any war. When you read that book and when you read the Art of War for Spiritual Warfare, you will see that these people invest in knowing something about the enemy. Now, the Bible says that the devil, the enemy comes to steal, to kill, to destroy. The Bible also says that let us be alert because our enemy, the devil, Crows around like a hungry lion. To crawl means he's on your case. You know how someone can be on your case like a chief? That is what the devil does. Now, the Bible tells us that wisdom is the principal sin. And it says, in all thy getting, get understanding, get knowledge. Why is the Bible telling you that? Because the Bible says that as a spy, as part of this spy network, if you get knowledge, you are more superior. Let me tell you, the devil will look at Eunice and will study me before he attacks. He studies the things that easily make me angry. He studies the things that make me easily lose it. He studies the things that make me shout at my children. He studies, like he will study everything. By the time he surrounds me, he fashions weapons that are specific to the things that bring Eunice down. So if, for example, you're susceptible to being brought down because of the love of men or the love of people, the enemy will study you. Most of the weapons will come around, people will betray you, people will talk about you, people will cheat you, people will, because he will fashion his weapons like that, because he has knowledge about you. The superior art of, the supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. You can imagine a man who is not born again said that the supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. Guys, if there is anything you have to do to win the war, let God be on your side. If you have God on your side, you will fight from the winning side. There is something that God taught me last year. The scripture that says that God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. I had memorized it all my life, but I'd never understood it. And then this one morning I woke up and I keenly looked at that scripture and I turned in my, it in my mind's eye. And I realized that there are many areas where I was failing because of pride, because the moment I am proud, my number one enemy is God. And you would rather have the devil as your enemy. Like you would rather have your opposition as the devil. Why? Because you're already more than a conqueror. But when God is the one, you know, you're trying this, but because of pride, God is the one saying, uh, uh, you do not want to be in such a situation. So the supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. That is why we keep saying righteousness is important. Do the things that the word tells you to do. Tithe, give your giving. 
Do not gossip about people. All those things are helping you to be better than your enemy. The opportunity of defeating the enemy is provided by the enemy himself. That is what Sun Tzu says. Then the Bible tells us, do not give the devil a foothold. <laughs> On the other side, that's what the Bible says. Sun Tzu says, the opportunity of defeating the enemy is provided by the enemy himself. And then the Bible says, do not give the enemy a foothold. And so many other scriptures. Then San Tzu says, the good fighters of old put themselves beyond the possibility of defeat and then waited for the opportunity of defeating the enemy. Ha, I love that. Daily moving in such a way that I put myself beyond the possibility of defeat. And then I wait for the opportunity to defeat the enemy. That is why we pray daily. That is why some of us retreat daily. That is why we fast every week. That is why we give. That is why we care for the poor. That is why we don't run around to start calling 40 day fasts because the enemy has attacked. No. One of my mentors told me, the one who taught me maintenance fasting, also told me that armies do not buy weapons during the time of war. You prepare for war before the war comes. And he told me that Eunice, actually in order for you not to do the 40 day fast in, a, in such a days and a hurry, it is better to put in the 40 day fast when things are good. Why? Put yourself beyond the possibility of defeat and then just wait to defeat the enemy. So let me give this example. If you know that I'm always attacked in a particular area, I'm always attacked in my emotions. I'm all, when you are very okay, study more about that thing. Get teachings about that thing. Pray so much about that thing. Have someone speak into your life about that thing. Because the truth of the matter is where the enemy attacked once, he's going to attack again. Put yourself in a place where there is no possibility of defeat. Take your position. Stand. The Bible says that after we have done everything else, we still stand. One of the last things that I want to share that San Tzu said is, if you know the enemy and know yourself, you need to fear, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. Actually, San Tzu went ahead and he said that if you know the enemy, but you do not know yourself, the chances that you are going to win are only 50-50. That is what he said. Now, listen, this is not a man of God. San Tzu is not a pastor. He's not a prophet. Eh? He's not a leader of a congregation of thousands or millions. Like Because I know for some of us, those things really get us. San Tzu is just a military general. But he understands when the Bible says you should know the condition of your flocks. He understands when the Bible says do not be unaware of the enemy's devices. He understands when the Bible says watch and be vigilant because your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a hungry lion. He understands when the Bible says do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. He understands when the Bible says, test me and see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour a blessing upon you that you cannot entertain. Ladies and gentlemen, if you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not to fear the result of a hundred battles. So what does it mean? It, these things of self-discovery are valid. But don't end at discovering that I'm a sanguine. That doesn't help you map that sanguine nature onto the scriptures. That's why I told you that for me, my sanguine nature they got, used to get me attacked <clears throat> from the enemy because I would talk, 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 talk. No wonder the Bible says that out of when many words are spoken, it is not rare that they'll be seen. The Bible doesn't say that it is bad to speak a lot, but you know why? Sometimes when you talk, 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 because you don't have a certain understanding of discreetness, you sin by giving away information. By the way, when you read the art of war, they say that if intelligence information leaks to the enemy and it doesn't go through the key spies, both the person who has brought the information and the key spies must die. So sometimes even heaven is saying, Eunice, for the sake of the kingdom, let us not take you to this platform. Let me continue with some lessons. These are the types of spies and I want to use these to explain to us some things, some from personal experience, 
some from the word of God. These are the types of spies according to Sanzu and according to Cindy Trim. There is what they call the reverse spies. The reverse spies are from among the enemy spies. They are from the enemy spies. By the way, let me tell you something. Because you don't understand espionage, desist from commenting about the war between Uganda and Rwanda. Why did they hold this guy? Why did they take this one to the safe house? Why did they take this to Chitalia? When things are too wonderful for you or too much for you to understand, usually what I do personally is I shut up. Because I have told you, these people study the art of war for a living. They can be wrong sometimes, but they usually have good reasons why they do certain things, reasons that you and I, who is a civilian, doesn't understand. Now, a reverse spy will come from the enemy spies. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, when someone who was a, a devil's agent gets born again and has a testimony, don't say they are just going to make us fear. I have already told you your position. Check some time and listen to some of these things. They are important in your spying. You get to know the networks the other side. I realize that there are some people who are just demon sensitive. They focus on that. And that is a problem. But don't be unaware. Don't just be there living poor. Don't. The reverse spy is a real serious thing in the army. They are always trying to get a spy from the enemy's side to get them. I remember one time, my experience, I used to go to a certain gym in Tinder. And during that time, I was not breaking through in the restaurant business. And I didn't know what to do. I had done everything in the book. I had prayed. Oh, my God, I pray. I had prayed. I'm a prayer. I pray. I pray. I fast. I what? And there was this guy in this gym who always liked to talk to me. And I used to feel offended because you see, you're panting, you're panting, you're, you know, you don't want to talk, but he would like to improve me in conversation. One day the spirit of God told me, Eunice, just listen to this guy. Because I would put on my earphones to try to make him see that Bambi, I, I, I don't want to hear. So I remember the day I gave him my ear, I realized he was a reverse spy. I didn't even look for him. Sometimes you have to go and look for this, the reverse spies. I didn't look for him. The gentleman started to give me key information about the restaurant industry in Kampala and key information about a key restaurant in Kampala. I think that has been one of the most life-changing experiences for me in this business. He told me what they do, why they do it, where they were going to plant the next location, what was going to happen, etc., etc. And that information helped me so, so much to know what to do. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you don't become a reverse spy because some of you, <laughs> you're in our camp, but the enemy actually, you lose cannon, so the enemy uses you as a reverse spy. Whatever can work with the enemy can also work with spies. The other spy is the local spy. The local spy is among the local people. That is why you hear people saying, eh, hey, don't joke with Boda Boda men, Munange. Most of them are spies, whatever, whatever. It could be true, it may not be true. But a spy will come, they will rent a house near you, they will see, sometimes even for our businesses, someone will come and set up a shop across you. They will see how you come in and how you go. They will put people to come and even buy your stuff. They will get, that is why we get <clears throat> in business, that is why we get what we call, um, what are those called? Uh, blind what? I'm forgetting the name. Um, but, but we get people who come, mystery, mystery shoppers. shoppers. Mystery shoppers, yes. Because those are local spies. But also that is why we do market research because there are local people who can give you information, sometimes even when you have not asked for it. Now, if you are going to wage war, spiritual warfare, you need to enroll some local spies. You need, when you go into a location, when you are going to do spiritual mapping, you need to find some people whom you can ask. What are some of the things that have happened here? Are there accidents in this place? When was the last accident? What do they do here? Which church is the biggest here? Is there a mosque nearby? How many people does it take? Things like that. Because in spy networks, there is always a local spy. And then there is the inside spy. The inside spy 
is among the enemy's officials. That is how armies infiltrate other armies. That is why in business we do competition analysis. That is why in business we visit the competition. Now you find believers, they have no clue what they are doing, but they never visit the competition. They never go to sit in there. They never go to test. They never, they just hear the stories and then they pray against it. In spy network, there is the inside spy. Then there is the dead spy. The dead spy transmits false information to the enemy spies. Now, in our case, the devil sits in this, in this position as the chief liar because we are the enemy. So what does he do? He will counter the knowledge of truth. He will tell you you're not good enough. He will tell you to plant where you're not supposed to plant. I remember one of the times I made the biggest mistake in my business life is when I moved on false information and I planted a location in Tinder. Well, I don't have all the time to tell you that sad story, but just know by the time I left Tinder, I was in debt amounting to 97 million shillings. There were so many lies that happened. There is always a dead spy around you. They want to counter the knowledge of truth. They will help you to interpret market. You know, when you know that there is a dead spy and you counter it by the knowledge of truth, it will help you to interpret market information rightly. It will help you. I had to study and make myself a servant approved and learn to rightly divide the word of truth that even when I see a statistic, I want to interpret that statistic either in the presence of God or using tenets of the word of God. I don't just run with statistics because they are dead spies. Then there is the living spy. The living spy usually comes back to report. That is why we need prophetic information as spies. That is why we need a rema word. That is why we read the written word. That's why we need a word of knowledge. And the Lord himself sits in this space of the living spy by the Holy Spirit. So you who prays for 10 minutes, I wonder how the living spy will find you with information. You who reads only a quarter, actually a quarter is too much, an eighth of the Bible in the whole year. I wonder how the living spy will find you. You know, I was telling some of my mentees the other day that the Bible says that in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was with God. So it means that when I look at the word of God, I am looking at God. So I cannot start saying, it means you don't read the word. You're not also looking intently. And I remember asking one of my mentees to look thinly in my face. If you look clearly around here, you're going to see that I have a certain cross, a certain dot in my face. Unless you're keen, you won't see certain emotions of God. Unless you're keenly studying the word of God, you will not understand God. You will always live in the shadow of, I don't understand. I don't know what God is saying. I don't know what he's training me at right now. It is only my friends who have keenly looked at me that know this and have even asked me. Because when you keenly look, you start to ask certain things. I have people who have known me for years and they've never asked me. But I fell when I was little, I fell in a sewer and this part got opened up like that. And my auntie that was uh, working in Mulago then did some surgery at home on me, no anesthesia, nothing, natunga, and I became okay. Now, people, one of the ways you're going to spy is to keenly look into the law of truth. Now, this is the type of information we look for when we go to spy. One, what are the identities of the defending generals? If you want to understand this well, go back and listen to the teaching that Richard Lutalo did. You see, the spiritual realm is in hierarchies. We fight against principalities, powers of darkness, rulers of evil. You know, like there is, there are, there are about five levels. Usually when a general is spying, they want to know the identity of the defending generals. Why are people in this space like this? Who is selling the most here? Why do they sell like that? Where do they draw their power from? Who are they associated with? You want to know the identities of the defending generals. 
So do you know the identity of the defending general concerning that war that your family is going through, concerning that war that your business is going through, concerning that war that your workplace is going through? Number two, who are their associates? Who are the people they are associating with? You see, the Gibeonites understood this very well, very well, that they decided to lie to the Israelites and they decided to get associates. Because when you read their story, they said they told the Israelites, eh, we know that God has told you to kill everybody. You can like these guys got information about the Israelites, and the Israelites didn't get information about the king. And the Israelites ended up fighting a war they were not supposed to fight. They carried a burden they were not supposed to carry. Why? Because these guys understood the art of war. So they got to know who their associates are. Those leading, those market leaders in this economy, those market leaders in that area where you serve, who are their associates? Which associations are they a part of? Can you get to be a part of them and serve there and get to know what they do? What law are they part of? You know, the other day I was teaching someone to pray about her marriage. And I said, the Bible says that the two shall become one. You leave your mother and father and you come and cleave. Okay? The law says you come and cleave. And there was no cleaving in the process. So we knew that law. But we also asked ourselves, who is the other person associating with Bani Abamua information? Because then when we are praying, we pray into effect the law as we know it, but we also deal, that is the things that are in the other side are the things we destroy. And then the things that we know are in the law are the things we establish. That is why the Bible says that we break and build. We bind and loose. Okay? Number four. Number three, who are their visitors? I want you to go back and read the story of 1 Samuel 22, 9 to 13, the story of Dog, the Edomite. She, he visited that shrine, that, that, that place where David went and visited and he picked us the spear that he had used to kill Goliath and he was going to fight Saul. And Dog, because he was a visitor there, he saw information and he took it back. Now, some of you usually quarrel at the airport. Why do they make us sign these things? Why do we fit in? They don't even use this information. Why do they want me to write down my phone number? My friend, if you're going to spy, you want to know who visited. That is why when you visit, they say, how much money have your family visited? Because they know that a spy is also exposed to a certain amount of resources. Okay? Number four, who are their gatekeepers? Now, this is very important in warfare. The gatekeepers are the ones who let in and the gatekeepers are the ones who let out. By the way, everything you're doing, even the devil is doing it. Who are your gatekeepers? He's studying. Who are those things who, when, those people who when they say something, you don't even question it, irrespective of whether it is true in the word of God. And he will pass through those people, the gatekeepers. That is why at introduction ceremonies, he passes through singers. They are usually the gatekeepers through which evil gets into your marriage. And even you as a believer, you say, Senga, Gambia. The Senga has said, you don't understand how the enemy works. In Joshua 9:2, the king knew that the Gibeonites were warriors. He knew that they had a large land. He knew everything about them. And that is why he went and he got five other, four other armies and he joined with them because he knew the size of the gatekeeper. He even knew that the Israelites are on their side. Who are their gatekeepers? Number four, who are their chamberlains? Those are the investors. Where do they get what they use? Huh? These, these people in the story of the Gibeonites, they knew that the Israelites were the gatekeepers. I want you to check out that battle at high in Joshua 10. They knew that these are the people who keep the gates of these people. Let us learn some lessons from Jesus. What did Jesus do to spy? Number one, he hovered over the situation. The Bible says, in the beginning, when the earth was formless and void, Jesus, the spirit of God, was hovering over the surface of the deep. Before Jesus said, this is where Mount Kilimanjaro will be located, he first spied the entire earth, and he knew that when Mount Kilimanjaro is located where it is located now, it cannot be moved, it will stand strong. By the way, that is why when he said, let there be everything just went in its place. You don't see anywhere in scripture where it said, ha, no, please. 
he took time to hover over the situation. You've got to have a microscopic eye. I tell my business people that I teach that you need to have at least one hour a day to hover, to just sit down and keep quiet and think about things and draw meaning from situations and think about the environment and the things that are happening. Jesus hovered over the situation. The Bible doesn't even tell us how long he did, but he could have hovered over it for as long as the earth has been here. Live among the people. The Bible says that Jesus was here for 30 years before he started real meaningful ministry. Live among them. Ladies and gentlemen, join their associations. The other day, I was really rebuked. I sat down with a friend. I don't know if she's online, two friends, and we were talking about how to raise funding for business. And she was telling me about so many business associations that I'm not a part of. And I realized I spend my time, if I'm not in charge, I'm with my children, I'm at my business premises, I'm at home. And I realized that a lot of things are happening in the marketplace. A lot of spiritual and physical exchanges are happening while I am inside and I have locked that door. Live among them. Number three. Study them and study their habits. That is why Jesus, by the time he started to talk to the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, he knew them. He had studied them. By the time he said your whitewashed tombs, he knew them. By the time he was saying that your manipulators, he knew them. By the time he overturned the tables of the money changers, he knew them. By the time he said, I forgive you, you, you don't know what, you, he knew. Study, study, study the habits of the people. Prayer. Jesus had numerous experiences of prayer. These are things, these lessons are how you are going to spy. You're going to hover over situations. You're going to live among the people. You're going to study their habits and study them. You're going to pray like your life depends on it. Because you know what? In prayer is where a rema word is going to come. In prayer is where the spirit of God, the living spy is going to find you. In prayer is where he's going to end, 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 interpret situations. In prayer is where he's going to lead you. The Bible says the footsteps of a righteous man are directed by God. I have not given so many testimonies in this teaching because if I went into my stories, I would not finish this teaching. But there have been many times I've woken up and the Lord just tells me, go on this site and click here and children of God, because I prayed that morning, I get information on how to buy things easily. He directs you by prayer. I have someone on this network that I met last week. She had been wanting to meet me. It wasn't time. It just wasn't time. I didn't know it. She didn't know it. Then I told her, I want us to meet. We met and did so many things. She thought the meeting was for her sake. <laughs> but in that meeting, the Lord unlocked a thing I have been looking for. I was looking for a distributor of certain things. He directed my footsteps to the day, the time. He even directed my words to be able to talk when nothing was about what I needed. Somehow I talked and I got what I needed. Don't dismiss the value of prayer. Don't pray upon prayers. Don't pray those two prayer points before the meeting starts. Don't say my man of God is praying over me and he just put their picture above your head, your, 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 your bed, eh? your, you know, that, that, that headboard. Prayer is a spy network. In prayer is where God is going to send confusion in the camp. In prayer is when he's going to tell you which weapon to use and which weapon not to use. Serve among them. That is another thing. Join the association. Jesus served among them. Jesus went to the temple. Jesus went and worked with the Pharisees. Jesus went to the river Jordan and found John. Jesus got into the water. Jesus allowed to, to undress when it was time to undress. He served among them. When you're going to spy, and this, I believe that there will be a bigger teaching on spiritual mapping under this series. But this is where Numbers 13 comes in. Numbers 13 is a very good text from spiritual mapping. Because it tells you, number one, map out the territory. These people were going to Canaan. Moses told them, you're going to move from this place to the other, the highlands, the lowlands. He told them where they were going. When they were going to, to the battle of Jericho, they mapped out the territory. You need to start and say, I want to spy concerning why I easily get angry. That is my territory this week you map it out and then you choose your strategies. The strategy that Moses chose was send 12 men. And he told them, when you go, look out. He gave them specific details. That's number three. 
what are you going to look out for? He told them, find out if they live in open, open lands or they live in fortified cities. Find out if they are many or they are few. Find out if they are big or small. Find out if they drink from these types of wells or not. Find out. He gave specific details of what he needs. For you, that spying you're doing, what details are you looking for? Because the detail will tell you the weapon. The detail, sometimes all you need to do is to be like Jesus. You just go and you sit at the well with a Samaritan woman who doesn't have discretion and you just make her talk. You know the details you're looking for. And so you know which strategy to use. Now, when you finish that, you receive the information. You ask yourself, what did we learn from there? What did we hear? And then finally, you make meaning out of the information. In all my years of teaching students at the university, I have realized that very few people know how to interpret data. In all my years of listening to people praying, I've realized that many people don't know how to interpret data. And they lose the word because they don't know how to make meaning out of the information. But I want you to learn to be like the Ethiopian eunuch. Ethiopian eunuch said, how can I understand unless someone helps me to explain it? Sometimes you need to look for someone to help you to explain what you have and what you have seen, the information. Sometimes you need to work with someone so that you learn from them how to make meaning out of situations so that when then that situation hits you, you also make the right meaning. I want to call for questions. I've tried to run through and cover as much as possible. I want to ask us, please do yourself a favor. Read The Art of War by Sun Tzu, The Art of War for Spiritual Warfare by Cindy Trim. Sit down with someone, try to understand and interpret it. If you have someone you know that is connected to the army and you know they are able to explain to you without giving you all the information about this nation, sit down with them and let them help you because for me, that is what helped me. This slide here that I'm going to leave on the screen, the types of spies, it really helped me so much. Over to you, Faith. Thank you so much, Eunice. Thank you for sharing your time with us and taking us through this. Um, I want to ask the participants if they have any questions. We have just a few minutes left, about five minutes. So if there's anything, would want you can either type in the chat or you can put up your hand and yeah. Uh, most people are asking where they can get the book from, both the the art of warfare and also the art of spiritual warfare. I bought, I got the Art of War online. I got the Art of War online. I got it from Amazon. I got the Art of War for Spiritual Warfare. <laughs> I, I, I got a hard copy. There was a time when one of the ministries here invited Cindy Trim, and I actually probably got the few copies that were there, and even the people in the ministry didn't. But uh, recently, one of my mentees was also able to get it online. Um, so I think you can get online. I've seen someone say that Derek Prince is, um, is good with, with warfare. Yes. Like I said, put yourself in a situation where you can listen to the word. So if, if actually you're, you're spying now is to understand warfare, because sometimes for us, the spying we need to do now is to get information, is to understand then you need to study as much as possible. I listen a lot to uh, uh, Derry Prince. And also, like I said, in a day, I have to find time to read the word. So my eyes must see the word, but I also have to always find some time to listen to the word. So for me, driving, time of driving is time to listen to the word. And then I have to find time to just meditate on the word. That is keeping it in the midst of my heart. So I find time where I switch off everything. When I was starting, I didn't know how to be still and be quiet. So what I would do is I would put on very soft uh, worship music. Sometimes I find myself singing and what, but over time, like I said, through constant use, you train yourself. Now I know how to actually stop and totally stop and just meditate on the scriptures that I've read that day. And in meditation, I ask myself, 
what, what does that scripture mean in the literal sense of it? How does it affect me as a mother? How does it affect me as a, as a, as a wife? How does it affect me as a business person? What would God be telling me? You know, like, so I meditate like that. And then many times then I, I start to search out for teachings that are in line with that word. Back to you, Faith. Okay, I think that also answers Tom Casule's question because he had asked for any other authors he could read and you mentioned Derek Prince. Um, Fiona Chumuhendo says, how does one pray unceasingly? Uh, praying unceasingly doesn't necessarily mean that the whole time I am articulating words as I pray. You see, prayer means having conversation with God and conversation means intimacy. It means constant connection. So even when I am looking at something that is happening and I start to map it out as far as scripture is concerned and I start to make meaning out of it, I'm actually connecting to heaven and most people don't actually relate that that too is prayer. But if what she is asking is how can she pray more, pray deeply and whatever, one of the things that I do, and I was telling mentees this week that I sometimes get a bit uh, selfish when it comes to spiritual growth. When I can't pray, I know friends whom I can tell that let us pray. And many times I don't even tell them that I want us to pray because I can't pray. I just tell them, I, uh, I, I'm thinking of going into a fast this week. Can we fast together? And they will all say, let's fast together. Learn to utilize your friends and your networks. The Bible says two are better than one. So if you've not yet developed a habit to pray, log on to this network every morning when they are praying. When they say it's 50 days of fasting and there is prayer, you may not be fasting for the 50 days, but pray with them. You will find that when you, at the beginning, you prayed one minute, then you pray 10 minutes, then you pray 30 minutes, you start to keep in step with the crowd and you start to keep in step with the Holy Spirit. When my father had just passed on, I lost the will to really, really talk in prayer. My prayer moments were just heart to heart, where I just go in the presence of God and I know that heaven knows that I'm speaking with my heart and even I know I'm, even me, I knew I was speaking with my heart. But I realized that I needed to start to articulate and to verbalize the things that I was feeling. But then I did not know how to lift myself up. I decided I was going to go to, into a, a, a fast of one month, but I also knew that I didn't have the will to fast. I have two friends who are usually my suspects. The ones I go with for, you know, to pray at the prayer mountain, what? I just sent them a message and I said, can we fast and uh, pray this whole month together? And so they kept me accountable. At the beginning of this week, the Lord gave me a word where he required me to be praying in the spirit for at least 30 minutes every day at a particular time. I didn't know if I would pull it off at the start. I went still to those two and I said, uh, can we pray in the spirit at this particular time every day? And so I found that at the start, I could pray 20 minutes in the spirit and the last 10 minutes, one of them was praying and I was just quiet. But as we are coming to the end of the week, I can go more than 30 minutes. So how do you pray seasonally? Unceasingly, use your networks to help to build yourself up in the most holy faith. It will help you. You will learn from others. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Jairus Mutebi says, uh, Doctor, any spying carried out in your home or origins that is related to the marketplace? Well, um, yes, many. I had said that I, I didn't want to go so much into my testimonies because they can be many. <laughs> I have many stories. I've gone through so much in this 41 years of my life. Um, but I remember when I started out my business, there were many things that were had happened in my own father's life, in my clan, where we come from, that were one of the things that the enemy was using to actually wage fashion certain weapons against me, and I didn't know. My habits of how I used money, the habits of how I spent, the habits of how I borrowed, many of those were hinged upon certain declarations that had been made in the ancestral altar. And despite the fact that I knew the scriptures and I was trying so hard, not much was happening. And then at some, and, and, and I, I tell you that I've done 13 businesses. I'm a hard worker. I've done 13 businesses that didn't work before the 14th business worked. And most of, most of the time, 
it wasn't just because I was careless. There was so much spiritual angle connected to the reason why we closed most of those businesses. So over time, I started to say, but you know, like, like, like the mother of Esau and Jacob, the Bible says that she experienced something that was unusual in her tummy. And so she said, hmm, this is not usual. There has to be something, so let me inquire. So she spied by inquiring. So even me, I started to get onto an inquiry and I said, Lord, I have done this and that and that. I have looked at this and this and the other. I have gone for this training and the other. Why is this particular thing not going? And God started to guide me and lead me. So long story short, this one time I go home to see my father, uh, my late dad, and he says, Eunice, I have been thinking about certain things that are happening to you girls and I think something is wrong. My father, didn't, didn't believe in warfare. But I remember as when God revealed to me, I started now to pray for, 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 for my dad to be prepared so that I don't just bombard. So I found my dad prepared. So I shared with him, I said, daddy, this and this and this and this is what must be happening. And you're the elder right now who can put things right. And to put things right, I think you need to do X, Y, Z. My dad was excited to do it. He was ready to do it. So I, I, I got some friends, some of them are on this network today. And we went to our ancestral home. My dad called a whole clan meeting. We had a whole night of dealing with things. And if I told you that story, in that meeting, all these spies were there. We had the reverse spy, the local spy, the inside spy, the dead spy, the living spy. They all were there and they gave us information that we used to come against the things that were happening. Guys just by that one change at that point, many things started to change inside in my business. So yes, there can be a connection to the marketplace. I had even been denied my PhD. I had been given some flimsy reasons and excuses why they could not give me the PhD. And there are certain things that are not coincidences. You know, people, non-believing believers believe in coincidences. Eh? They will come and say, ah, ah, I think it just happened. But those of us who know, know. Like they say, if you know, you know, if you know, you know. Because we had this meeting on a Saturday coming to Sunday and on Monday, the decision concerning my PhD was overturned. Without me trying, I was called in the office and they gave me another supervisor and within a month, I, had, I was on the graduation list. So yes, it's true. Thank you, thank you, Inis. Uh, so we have first time and I don't see any hands up or any other questions in the chat. But before I close, I don't know if there are any announcements from administration. Pastor Anthony, do we have any announcements before I close? Thank you very much, Dr. Yunis Adubango, for uh, quite a passionate sharing this morning. Uh, very, very much information there. And I think <laughs> you're provoking us to uh, dive more into the spy network in spiritual warfare. Definitely shall follow it up uh, in so many ways the Lord will guide us. Friends, thank you for coming on uh, this morning. And thank you for being part of this occupation, but also sp spiritual warfare is, is part of the package. Thank you for blessing the ministry with your support. Some of you already have the numbers. I uh, shared them on the WhatsApp platform and also on email. Don't hesitate if you, you your, one of your strategies is to support this ministry <laughs> um, as, as, a, as a, a good spy. Um, we, we will have another meeting on Monday, Monday morning. Uh, we hope to have Dr. Not Dr. Sorry, Mrs. Uh, Lona Magara also talk much more about altars Monday morning. So uh, mark your calendars and, and make time for that. 6.30 to 7.30, uh, you can come on uh, about 6 a.m. because there's also always prayer before uh, the main sharing. Amen. I think that's about it. Uh, we have an overnight tonight as intercessors for Uganda. We usually talk much more about uh, spiritual warfare and spying because it's one of the ways you understand what is the math about and what you need to do in the math. So it's tonight as well. Perhaps I'll share the link on the Spiritual Warfare series platform for those who would be interested from 11.30 to about 2 a.m. Okay. God bless you. We can unmute and share the words of grace together.
and the grace of the grace of God, Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the 